Well, hello folks, this is Tim from Sefton Motors, and we're here for a quick chalk talk on how to design a Sterling engine. We like to do these chalk talks to just kind of spread the word about what we're doing and about Sterling engines and power generation in particular. And this one, I think you'll enjoy, it just goes into how to derive a Sterling engine from a set of requirements. If, if you're if you're into that kind of thing. All right, here, here we'll get started. I'll get to the chalk and the board. All right, well, let's get started. Now, what we're going to take you through is how to design a Sterling engine. It's just a quick chalk talk on the fundamentals for coming up with the basic geometry of the Sterling engine, any kind of Sterling engine, because this is based on the physics that are underneath it, not necessarily on the type of Sterling that you're going to do but the physics underneath it. And I didn't derive this. This has been derived many times before, but it is pretty cool. So let's start with just a couple of input factors. And what do we need here? We need to define the temps, what the hot and the cold temperature are of the engine that we're going to be running it at, and what our desired power is. So do we want it to be a 2 kilowatt engine, a 100 watt engine, a 10 watt engine? What do we want to shoot for? What's our target? So we're going to go ahead and define those two things. So let's go ahead and define the cold temperature, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 311 degrees Kelvin. we got to work in Kelvins for the equations to work on. A hot temperature, 700 degrees F, 644 degrees Kelvin. And the power, let's shoot for 100 watts. And if we remember just our basic Stirling engine, it's basically, you know, we're going to just focus on using a, a beta style for this uh, discussion and basically it's a tube and in that tube I have two pistons one is called the displacer which pushes the air back and forth the other is called the piston okay now once we have those inputs defined the next thing we want to do is calculate what we define as a temperature ratio and that is just basically the hot divided by the cold. So 644 divided by 311, remember these are in Kelvin, and we get a temperature ratio of 2.1. All right, now we know our temperature ratio from the temperatures that we're, we're using as input. Now we want to define a compression ratio. Now a Stirling engine, if you want the Stirling engine to run, compression ratio must be less than the temperature ratio. So our compression ratio must be less than 2.1. We're going to pick one to be 1.8. And what is the compression ratio? The compression ratio is just basically the working volume of your working fluid, air in this case, let's say, versus the compressed volume of that working fluid. So V1 over V2. All right. All right. Now we have our temperature ratio. We have our compression ratio. Now we can calculate the power output of our engine. With just those three pieces of information, we can calculate what the power is of that engine. So to calculate, we'll use this particular equation, which is basically the work of the engine cycle is equal to the temperature cold times the gas constant R times the natural log of one over compression ratio, plus temperature hot times R times the natural log of the compression ratio. And once again, this equation, uh, I've taken it from a MIDE.com website. Great, great resource, good information. They have an actual calculator on there. If you want to calculate, just put in inputs and have a computer spit out the answer. Uh, that'll do that for you there also. All right, so these are our inputs. Temperature cold, 311. Temperature hot, 644. The gas constant. Compression ratio, 1.8. And uh, LN is just the definition of natural law. So the work, if we plug those in, we're going to get a work equals uh, this particular equation. It comes out to 56,175 joules per kilogram per cycle. Okay. Now let's go ahead and break that down, not per kilogram, but per gram. So that's going to give us our workout is 5.6 joules per gram per each cycle of that engine. So this gives us an understanding of what the uh, net output of that, of that engine is. 
Now let's go ahead and calculate what the overall power output of the engine at a given speed is. All right. And one of the things that's difficult to define on a Stirling engine, or I imagine uh, any engine at that, at that, in that case, is what the speed of the engine is going to be uh, running at. Uh, but we're going to take a, a rough guesstimate, and we're going to say the speed is going to be 240 RPMs. This is a relatively big Stirling engine we're going to, we're, we're designing, and so our speed is going to be about 4 hertz, right? Or, uh, you know, cycles per, per second. Four cycles per second, 240 RPMs. All right. Now we have the speed of the engine. We have the power output of the engine. Let's go ahead now and calculate what the size of the engine is going to be. And the size of the engine, what I mean by the size of the engine is the V1, the working, the volume of the working fluid of the engine. And if I take my work per cycle, 5.6 joules per gram, and I take my watts, which is going to be the work per cycle times the speed, times the number of cycles per second, I will get uh, 22.4 watts per gram of working fluid, in this case air. Now we want 100 watts, so we'll go ahead and basically multiply that times 4.5 to get 100 watts. So we're going to need 4.5 grams of air to work with at these temperatures at this compression ratio to develop this engine. All right, so if V1 is going to be 5 grams, let's just say 5 grams of air, then V1 is going to be equal to at atmospheric pressure 3.9 liters or 3,870 cubic centimeters. And that about does it. So now we have our engine. We have our cold temp at 100 degrees F. We have a hard temp at 700 degrees F. We have our compression ratio 1.8. We have our speed at 240 RPMs. We have our V1 at 3.9 liters. And we know V1 is 3.9 liters, and we know our compression ratio 1.8, so we also know V2, which is, gives us the stroke of the piston. Um, now keep in mind two things. The power is going to change as a function of speed of the engine, speed may be different from the 240 RPMs that we use as a parameter for developing this. And also, the power will change as a function of air, right? So we talked about having 5 grams of air in the, as, as a working fluid. If we double the pressure of that air, that doubles the, uh, the grams that we're working with of air in that particular same uh, environment, which will double the power. So and here's our engine here. At the hot at 700, the cold at 100, the V1 at 3.9, you have the V2 at 2.1. And you can really design this in any shape, fashion uh, that you like to get these particular volumes, right? With the stroke, with the size, or whatever it might be. Now, so that's the first step on how to design a Stirling engine. Now, the second step, of course, comes into how do I move that heat into the working fluid and how do I move the heat out? That'll be a separate dis uh, discussion where we talk about heat of convection and heat of uh, conduction. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. All right.